Let's take a look at this example from section 3.9, which deals with the topic of related rates. Uh, I'm going to read through this. Uh, related rates problems uh, almost always are given in the form of a word problem. And we're talking about different quantities that have some relationship. Often it's geometrical, but might be you know some other relationship between variables and the idea is that the if the variables have some relationship given by an equation then their rates of change will have to have some relationship so that gets to the name related rates okay so i'm going to read through this and then sketch a diagram and we'll take it from there. So it says, once Kate's kite reaches a height of 50 feet above her hands, it rises no higher but drifts due east due to a wind blowing uh, at 5 feet per second. How fast is the string running through Kate's hands at the moment she has released 120 feet, 120 feet of string? Okay, so, it, very important here to have a diagram. Uh, we're talking about a kite. Initially, it's straight up uh, 50 feet above her. It moves east over time, and so the, as, as it's moving east, she's releasing string. Um, now, it says that it rises no higher, so we're thinking of the height as remaining at 50 feet. Of course, she has to release string as it's pushed east because, um, no, you know, 50 feet of string is no longer sufficient as it's moving if it's going to remain at that height, um, but be east of her. So, if you think about this, we've got a situation that is represented by a triangle and this I'll, I'll say right off the bat this is not going to be to scale uh, but but we've got this situation where Kate is down here there's our right angle and then the kite is over here So there's our kite. Okay. Um, okay, so here's what we know. This is 50 feet. Um, this, I'm going to label, well, let's do this. I'm going to label this as A, B, and C. And we know from the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, now as time passes, this triangle is changing shape uh, because the kite is moving. The, the side length b and the hypotenuse c are getting longer. Uh, a is not changing, but those other sides are. All right, now in any related rates problem, you need some equation that tells you how the variables are related. Um, here it is for this one. The problem won't typically give you the equation, but it will give you the information that will you know, tell you what kind of shape you're working with um, or you know, at least give you enough information to know what uh, what the equation should be. If I take the derivative of both sides, the important thing to understand here, very similar to implicit differentiation in the previous section, is that we're treating each variable as a function of, in this case, time. Now, time is not represented in this equation. There's no variable t or some other variable that would represent time. The only variables we have here are representing lengths of 
sides. But we are thinking of all of them as functions of time. So when I take the derivative of both sides, I'm going to get 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt equals 2c dC dt. And if you prefer, you can use a prime, b prime, and c prime instead of dA dt, dB dt, dC dt. Um, I prefer to use this uh, Leibniz notation, the dA dt, uh, etc., to help distinguish that uh, and not make mistakes um, thinking the prime is an exponent or something. All right, let's fill in what we know. Now we know that dB dt, I'll write it up here, dB dt is 5 feet per second. Okay, they've told us that the wind is blowing at 5 feet per second. Oops. There we go. Uh, dA dt is 0. Because that side's not changing. Now we also know that C, at the time we're interested in, C is 120. Okay. I'm going to just make a note of that. Um, let me write, restate the question down here. So we want to find the C D T when C is 120. Now I want to be careful, you know, not to just write C equals 120 up here. C is not constant, but the time we're interested in is the time when C is 120. Okay, now let me off to the side here. Fill in the value of A and C at the time we're interested in. We don't know, we weren't given a length for B, but we can determine that by the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and if we do that, I'll leave it to you to, to check this, but b is going to come out to be 10 times the square root of 119. Okay, we are going to need that value because now we're going to fill in everything we know here, and the only thing that's left unknown is dc dt. So we're going to have 2 times 50 times 0 plus 2 times 10 times the square root of 119 times 5 is equal to 2 times 120 times dc dt. All right, so we have 100 times the square root of 119 equals 240 dc dt Okay, and that comes out uh, as a decimal to be approximately 4.55. Okay, the units are going to be feet per second. Okay, so that's our, make that a wavy equal sign, but that's our answer we were looking for uh, using related rates. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Um, related rates is a challenging topic, but... Uh, it's quite similar in a lot of ways to implicit differentiation. So I think as you understand one, you'll understand the other a little better. And both of those uh, rely on this concept of the chain rule. Okay. Uh, see you in the next video.